So first I want us to recall the formal definition of our derivative, that initial limit with the difference quotient that we looked at, and then also our alternate form for a derivative that is only talked about when we're looking at a specific value. Both of them are just expressions to find slope, but remember that limit makes it to where we're finding the instantaneous slope, or that slope as the distance between the two values gets closer and closer to zero, which we've got a lot of different rules at this point that we use for derivatives, so usually we don't use this, but possibly if we had a question like this, where we can recognize that the question is in that form of the definition of derivative. So if we can just recognize the part of this difference quotient that is the derivative, we can kind of sidestep actually simplifying this and just find the derivative. So because they've got cosine, and this is our f of x part, so our f of x is cosine, and they're trying to find the derivative of cosine at the value pi over 2. So they're trying to find f prime of pi over 2. So instead of simplifying, I can just say, okay, well, my f prime, the derivative of cosine is just negative sine. And then I'm evaluating at pi over 2. So since sine of pi over 2 is 1, my answer is just going to be negative 1 for that derivative. Some other things that we want to remember about a first derivative is that it is instantaneous slope at a point. It is also the slope of the tangent line at that point. And then if we're talking about position, it is velocity. I know I've used each of these rules throughout calculus, but I just want to give a quick example of each one. So our power rule for finding derivative, multiplying that exponent by the coefficient, knocking it down to power, so you'd have 8x plus 5. The product rule, remember that we are taking the derivative of the first equation, so we've got two different things going on here, or the derivative of the first equation times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. For the quotient rule, we're taking the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the denominator squared. And then last but not least, the chain rule. We've got a function inside of a function here, so our first step is to take the derivative of the outside. So we've just got this bringing the three out front and raising that whole thing to the second. And then the derivative of the inside, our first inside thing is sine, so we'll take the derivative and say cosine of 2x. And then finally, the derivative of the very inside is going to be 2. It's important to be prepared for general applications of each of these rules where they don't give you a specific function, but maybe define a function like this where p of x equals x times f of x minus g of 3x minus 2, and then they want you to evaluate p prime of 2 using the table. So first, just finding p prime. I would need to recognize like this x times f of x, I need to use the product rule because they're multiplying two different functions. So my derivative of x is 1 times f of x plus the derivative of f of x is f prime times x. For this g of 3x minus 2, I need to use the chain rule because I have a function inside of g of x. So my derivative is going to be g prime. Oh, that was subtraction. Oops. My derivative is going to be g prime of 3x minus 2. But then I also have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, so I'm multiplying by 3. So that was the challenging part. Now you're just plugging in for p prime of 2. I'm plugging in 2 for all of my x values. And then be really careful that you're checking for the right thing in the chart. Um, let's see, this is going to be 6 minus 2, so 4. And then that you're doing proper arithmetic. After all of the plugging in, simplifying, you should get 10. Remember that when we're writing the equation of a tangent line at a specific point, we need to find the slope at that point, so the derivative at, in this case, negative 1. And then we also need to figure out 
what that point is on the function so that we can use it for our x and our y. So for this example, we would find f prime first is 12x squared minus 5. In order to find the instantaneous slope, we're plugging in negative 1. So we'll get a positive 12 minus 5. So our slope is 7. And then to write an equation, we also need to find f of negative 1. So we'll have a negative 4, a positive 5, and a positive 3. So 4. So we've got the point, negative 1, 4. And then it's just a matter of using point-slope form to say y minus 4 equals 7x plus or minus a negative 1, so plus 1. And remember, if you're dealing with a free response question, that there is no need to simplify it. I'll just leave it how it is. If you're curious and you want to keep going, since this one is multiple choice, it ends up being C. Sometimes they will even give you the derivative, and in this case, they even give you the full point. So if you're going to write an equation for the tangent line at negative 1, 1, you would really be able to ignore that completely and then just plug in your negative 1 for x, your 1 for y to see what the derivative is. It ends up being 1 fourth if you want to try this one. And then because they gave us the x and the y value, then we're just plugging in our point and the slope into point slope form. The last thing that I want to cover today is implicit differentiation. And remember that that happens when we're taking the derivative of something that has x's and y's mixed into it. So here's what we're trying to take the derivative of. On the left side, when I take the derivative, I have to use the product rule because I have a 3x times y. So I'll have my derivative of 3x is 3 times y plus the derivative of y is dy dx times 3x. And remember, anytime you're taking the derivative of y, you're going to have that dy dx for the derivative of y. On the right side, I have that the derivative of 4x is 4, and then our y squared derivative is 2y dy dx. Now to simplify something like this, where we're trying to solve for the dy dx, remember that we want anything with a dy dx in it on one side. So I'll keep my dy dx times 3x on this side. I want to subtract over my dy dx times 2y. And then I'll subtract over my 3y to where it's on the other side. Because this way I can factor out the dy dx and then divide by this 3x minus 2y. So that'll be my last step. And then the beauty of a first response question here is that I can just leave it like that. If it was multiple choice like this, this actually isn't matching any of my answer choices. So I have to make sure, like for this one is really close, the 4 and the negative 3y are there, but then my signs are opposites for the denominator, where for d, the signs are opposites for every single term. So that's how I know that it is d. It would be like if I multiplied this by negative 1 over negative 1 all of the signs would change. For our last example, we're combining tangent lines and then also implicit differentiation. So I do want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the slope of the tangent line to this curve at the point 3, 2. So we should get that the slope of the tangent line is 8 over 18, or if you simplified it, it would be 4 over 9. Since we're talking about the slope of the tangent line to the curve, our first steps are just finding the derivative. So we do have to use implicit differentiation. Make sure for this piece that that negative 2xy, first of all, that you use the product rule when you found the derivative, but also because that negative was out in front of the 2xy, that means that the whole product rule is negative as well. So it might help to put it in parentheses and a negative sign on the outside or to make both pieces of that negative. That would do the same thing. And then once you get dy dx by itself, 
since we're finding the slope of the tangent line at the point 3, 2, we're plugging in both 3 in for the x's and 2 in for the y's to see what the derivative is.